guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the all new 2023 Ford Expedition Limited. And a huge thanks to Zach and the rest of the management and staff here at Ford of Port Ritchie for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to our inventory below and if you're looking for a new car or truck in the Port Ritchie, Tampa, Clearwater area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Zach. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Expedition replaced the Bronco as Ford's full-size SUV back in 1997. The fourth generation Expedition that you see here is released in 2018, facelifted last year for 2022, featuring a revised front end, new wheel designs for all trims, plus an interior that's similar to the new 14th generation F-150. We get a standard 12 inch touchscreen with an optional 15 inch touchscreen that we have here. We also get a new Timberline trim plus a new limited stealth performance package, bumping us up to 440 horsepower, 510 pound feet of torque, almost the same exact numbers as the Raptor. The only difference is the Raptor makes 450 horsepower. For 2023, there are subtle changes for the Expedition, the most notable being the Timberline trim now getting a one pedal trail drive mode. There are six trims for 2023, available either in a standard wheelbase or a long wheelbase. The standard wheelbase can tow up to 9,300 pounds, whereas the long wheelbase is dropped to 9,000. All trims for 2023 feature a 3.5 liter V6 EcoBoost made to a 10 speed automatic transmission, cranking out 375 horsepower, 470 pound feet of torque, enough to get the Expedition to 60 under five and a half seconds. Limited trims and up get a little bit more power, cranking out 400 horsepower, 480 pound feet of torque, enough to get the Expedition to 60 closer to 5.2. And with that limited stealth performance package that bumps us up to 440 horsepower, 510 pound feet of torque, you can expect zero to 60 around five seconds. The base Expedition starts around 55,000 bucks. The top trim for the Expedition is the Platinum with a base price of 80K. Here's the limited trim sitting right in the middle at 68,000 bucks for the base price. What else we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, you notice your unique grill. This is part of the limited high package at 1,700 bucks. Gives us a more unique grill, full LED headlights, LED daytime running lights, and unique LED fog lights. Full front parking sensing, forward facing camera. We get to 360 here on the limited trim. Very nice front end. This white metallic paint really shines in this Florida sun. Hopefully you guys can pick it up on camera. Absolutely beautiful metallic. The wheel and tire setup, let's walk over to the side. These are also unique for the high package on the limited trim. We get these 22s with a ton of spokes. Wrapped in general, grabber, all season tires, dimensions being 285-45 R22. So super wide compound. 22s are very tall and the 45 series sidewall should still keep the ride quality pretty smooth. We don't get an additional side sensor for the 360, but that one front parking sensor does poke out a little bit towards the side. We get power running boards too that's available for the limited high package for about 1700 bucks. The side mirrors are body color with a black contrast beneath. Additional side sensor to help out the 360, LED turn signal on the mirror itself. The glass is massive, fills up the entire frame. Blind spot monitoring on the glass. We get all chrome trim for the bottom part of the window trim, body color up top, blacked out B pillar. You get roof rails up top. Looks like two sets of roof rails. Hopefully you can pick it up on camera. Hopefully I'm tall enough for you guys to be able to pick up that panoramic moon roof too. We get four door smart access. I'll take a step back. Hopefully you can pick up the side profile of this very aggressive expedition. It's not the long wheelbase, the long wheelbase would stretch us out about a foot, but this is still a very large full-size SUV. The rear wheel and tire setup is the same thing, the 285-45s R22s. The only difference is a smaller brake caliper, six-piece lug pattern. The gas cap is pushed to open. We can open it up. Easy fill. I recommend premium fuel for this high output 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. This thing gonna close. There we go. We get full LED taillights, turn signals, and reverse lights. Limited badge. Shout out Ford of Port Ritchie for helping make this review possible. All chrome for the Expedition badging. Ford badge right up top. Rear view camera. We have full rear parking sensing and a tow hitch covered up with that plastic cover. The short wheelbase Expedition is rated to tow 9,300 pounds. And one thing I absolutely love about the Expeditions is check this out. One of the last SUVs where you can press a button and open up the glass individually from the rest of the trunk. So if you have pets, you go for a shopping trip, you don't have to worry about your dog running out or jumping out, running all over the parking lot. You can just simply drop your bags into your tailgate very conveniently. The Bronco also does this, but you have to go with the hard top Bronco to get this feature. Here, it comes available on all expeditions. And you can also press the button down below and the whole trunk opens right up. We'll take a squat back here, get a good look at the exhaust tip. We only have a single exhaust, but it still makes a ton of power. Fully independent rear suspension. The Expedition was the first full-size SUV, at least the American full-size SUVs, to have a full independent rear suspension. Spare tire, but speaking of the exhaust tip, let's fire up this high output 3.5 liter twin turbo EcoBoost V6 and hear how she sounds.
All right, guys, that was the sound of the high output 3.5 liter EcoBoost twin turbo V6 sold by Ford for the 2023 Expedition Limited and up. And it sounds okay, but it makes a ton of power at 400 horsepower, 480 pound feet of torque, enough to get this over 5,000 pound full size three row SUV to 60 in the low five second range. That is really impressive performance. The engine sits low in the engine bay, should help the handling out tremendously. Aluminum stick connecting your two strut towers together. But what you see is basically what we get. We can shut this hood right down. The struts are appreciated by me before an SUV in this price point, they're to be expected. We'll take one more step back, get a good look at the front styling. One more quick look at the side profile and let's check out the interior on this mid-level limited expedition and consider the mid-level here this is a loaded loaded suv up top we get this double tier contrasted burgundy leather it's a really clean look very soft leather up top gushy soft leather for the armrest the door opens up just like an f-150 four window auto one touch power folding mirrors and their four-way adjustable three-person memory seats the bottom portion is hard plastic we only get a single tier of storage unlike the f-150 but that single tier of storage is massive you're gonna fit two footlongs in the centerpiece six inch sub right next to it and two 24 ounce water bottles to wash it down we get the bang and olsen sound system here too power deploying running boards and expedition nameplate as we step inside, the seats are perforated leather, burgundy, heated and ventilated too. The center is completely perforated. They're fully adjustable, lumbar control. You can recline, drop, lift, and slide the seats. Taking a step inside, foot on the running board, making everything super convenient, hand on the grab handle. And taking a seat, we can really check it out. So foot on the brake, we're currently in the accessory mode, but foot on the brake, everything fires right to light but first thing we notice is the steering wheel it's very similar to the f-150 it's solidly thick we get 10 and 2 bolstering notches i like the feel of this leather six o'clock spoke the horn area has a rubberized plastic texture the horn itself very aggressive sounding horn i'll do a window check real quick see if we have dual pane windows we do so the isolation from the road should be fantastic we'll check that out once we take this car out for a drive on the left side of the steering wheel we have volume controls voice commands lane keep assist and radar cruise control on the right side you can skip your songs hang up and answer your phone calls and adjust the infotainment cluster speaking of infotainment cluster right now we can alternate between my view trip fuel vehicle information towing navigation this vehicle does get navigation so you can get a direct turn by turn directly to your heads up phone audio and settings and right back to where we started my personal favorite to look at at all times be trip and fuel see the fuel economy see our average mpgs no this suv does not actually average 4.1 mpgs it's a brand new vehicle spent most of its life idling so far so once it's actually taken on real drives you should be expecting mpgs closer to like 17 18 maybe even 19 20 because ford advertises the combined mpgs in this suv at 19. Other than that though, up top we have our coolant temperature, oil temperature, PSI turbo gauge, fuel level, tack on the left side goes to about 6200 RPM just like the F-150. Unlike the F-150 though, we have 160 mile an hour speedometer. The F-150 goes to about 120. The stock, we have auto rain sensing wipers, auto high beams, auto headlamps, we have fog lights too, interior brightness. You press this button to fold the seats down with a click of a button, power lift gate too, electronic parking brake, and we get adjustable pedals. That's a huge feature if you share this vehicle with somebody that's shorter, or if you yourself is a shorter driver trying to get more comfortable in the expedition. Power tilt and telescoping steering wheel, that's a nice feature. We have some leather for the front part of the dashboard, but I'm gonna knock Ford for not continuing the leather. It's hard plastic here, hard plastic there. I feel like for an SUV starting around the $70,000 price point, we should've just done all leather, all faux leather, all vinyl, something soft for the dashboard. Even making just a soft padded plastic, that would've been fine by me, but the hard plastic at this price point, definitely gotta give them a thumbs down. The air controls are outlined in this wood trim. I'm not sure if it's genuine, but it looks very premium. Pro trailer mode, trailer brake controller beneath that, engine start stop, all outlined in leather. The 15 and a half inch touchscreen is optional, basically straight out of the Mach-E that we reviewed countless times in this channel. The response is unbelievable. Very high tech with Ford's all new sync system. You can either have a direct over the top view or you can press this button and have a nice 3D view. Beneath that, Apple CarPlay, Sirius XM, phone, Bluetooth, all the shortcuts. I don't like how the shortcuts are all through the touchscreen, but the touchscreen is so responsive and largely illuminated that it's actually not much of an inconvenience. Beneath that, this is a little bit of an inconvenience, the climate controls. I wish we had hard buttons for the climate. At least we have hard buttons for the max defroster for the windshield, but that's the only hard climate button we get. That's one of the only hard buttons, period, that we get. We have traction control beneath that and hazards, but the heated, ventilated seats, climate in general, heated steering wheel, all controlled 
through the touchscreen. Beneath that, we have this cubby. You can open it up. It exposes a wireless charging pad, USB-A, and USB-C port. Hopefully, you can pick it up on camera. You can shut this thing up by simply pushing it and close it right up with some wood trim. Not sure if it's genuine, but feels very high quality. Genuine leather trim for where your knee will often hit with some additional storage right outside of it. Hopefully, you can pick that up on camera. The gear selector controls a 10-speed automatic transmission. They take a quick look at the backup camera. Excellent resolution. We get guidance lines and trajectory and a really high resolution 360 too. That's a big thumbs up by me. Throw this thing right back into park and it returns us right back to the home screen. Put it back into reverse. We're looking at a rear view camera. And after we reverse a little bit, we can put it into drive and see if we get a front camera. Nope, it does not automatically turn us into a front camera like BMW or Audi, but you can individually press the camera button and access the camera if that's what you would like. You press this top apps button. We have radio, phone, navigation, media, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and Sketch. We can check out Sketch. You can literally draw in your Expedition if you'd like to for one reason or another. Not quite sure why you would like to, but I guess it is available. If you press the Expedition logo in the top left corner, it shows us our controls and settings, trailer towing, no active trailer connection checklist, and you can add a trailer with memory. Valet mode two, you press this camera button and it shows us our front facing camera that we were just talking about. Awesome. But my personal favorite to look at at all times would simply just be the navigation screen. So we will return there and leave it there for the purpose of this review. Underneath the gear select, there's a drive mode selector. You press this button, we get normal mode, tow haul mode, slippery, trail, eco, and sport. We'll start the review off in normal transition to sport, but my only complaints are why are normal and sport so far apart? I wish you went normal then directly into sport so I didn't have to keep pressing the button until I actually found sport. But if that's my only complaint with this SUV, it probably says more about me than the SUV itself. Additional storage cubby, perfect for coins, business cards, parking sensors you can turn off for one reason or another. More wood trim. The wood trim also covers your cup holders. The cup holders, they fit my sunglasses with no problem, but they also fit 24 to 30 ounce bottles with no issues. Gushy soft burgundy leather for the armrest. The console space is absurdly massive. We have, you can easily fit six, seven iPhones here, business cards, coin slot, beautiful. But check out the space of this console itself. You'll fit a 12 pack of two liter bottles of soda. You'll fit four, maybe five bowling balls in there. This is truly one of the largest consoles in the business. Put this cubby right back and we have some coin slots or pen slots. What am I saying? Pen slots in the top part of the console. We have two tiers of glove boxes. The top tier is also covered in wood trim. You'll fit a pair of shoes in there if you're under a size 10 or so. The bottom tier, we can pop it down. It's not damped, but it's very wide. It's not deep enough to fit a license plate, but it's wide enough to probably fit two pairs of shoes. We have a 12 volt for the front seat. Auto dimming rear view mirror. It's not frameless. The interior lights are LED. Cool sunglass holder, garage home link settings on the visor. We have a panoramic moonroof to open up the shade. You press this button. And the shade opens up pretty quickly. It's a really sunny day today in Port Richie. That sun is basically blinding me. You can open the shade up fully. Cool. The roof rails are a little in the way, so I hope the glass doesn't go up and scrape against it. We'll see what happens here. Cool, okay, so this first panel of glass goes underneath the second panel to avoid any confusion. See if it goes out any further. It does. We can poke our way out of here. It is a beautiful day today in Port Ritchie, Florida. Sunny in 82, but that sun is so ridiculously bright, probably adding quite a bit of glare in this interior. That's about it though for the front seat. If I happen to miss any features, we can take a quick look at this window sticker for the 2023 Expedition Limited with only two wheel drives. The seven passenger, we have captain's chairs out back, which we'll check out in one second. Star white metallic tri-coat, mahogany leather trim seats. Standard features, you guys can pause, take a look at all of these. Absolutely loaded, loaded with standard features. The high equipment group for the Limited is 1,705 bucks. That includes running boards, power deploying, tri-zone climate control, Brang & Olsen sound system, remote start, reverse sensing system, second row heated seats, privacy tent rear glass panoramic vista roof, and 22 inch mock or machine finished aluminum wheels with painted pockets. Options for 995 bucks, you get the star white metallic tri-coat, 795 for the heavy duty trailer tow package, $50 credit for the second row window one touch removal, no charge for the captain chairs, $50 credit for the auto start stop removal. I would pay them 50 bucks for that. I can't stand start stop. This SUV thankfully does not have it. 335 bucks for the advanced cargo manager, 795 for the 15.5 inch touchscreen, no charge for the hands-free lift gate removal, no charge for the front license plate bracket removal. And I don't mind not having a hands-free lift gate, honestly, because they never really work for me. Even when the key's in my pocket, it just never seems to work. But $68,000 base price, about 4,500 bucks in options, 1,795 in destination delivery charges, 
total us out at 74,380 bucks. It's expensive for an SUV, but this thing is loaded. A true luxury SUV, getting almost 20 combined MPG. So decently efficient. I'm not gonna call it a fuel efficient SUV, but decently efficient. Anything approaching 20 MPGs and it's this big and heavy, definitely relatively efficient for the power, for the size of the vehicle. That's about it for the front seat, guys. Let's check out the back seat, see how much space is offered back there as well as the overall quality of the materials. Again, we get smart access out rear too. The running boards continue out back. We get that two level mahogany burgundy stitched leather for the top part of the door panel, two banging Olsen speakers on the door panel, two gushy soft for the center portion, black leather even for the center in the rear door panel. The door opens up just like the F-150. We have two cup holders, one up here, one down below. Both will fit about 20 ounce cups. Two tiers of storage, you'll fit some candy bars in the top tier. You'll get a foot long in the bottom tier with no problem. The rear seats are captain chairs, fully adjustable. I believe you can recline them and slide them back and forth. We have perforation in the center. They're heated second row seats with individual armrests, which appear to be very wide for second row armrests. Taking a step inside though, put on the running board, grab on the grab handle. I'm a little bit over six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings and I still have a ton of space. We'll see if I can slide the seat back. I can get about another inch or two. I have at least a foot of knee room, just like the F-150, unlimited room for my feet, headroom, a little bit less than the F-150. I feel like I'm about to run out of headroom, maybe an inch, maybe two. So if you're under six foot four, six foot five, you shouldn't have any problems sitting in the back seat. Legroom wise, you shouldn't have any problems under seven feet tall, but your head may start to run out of space. Continuing along though, we have a full third zone climate control, AC adapter, and USB-A and C ports. It says Expedition right up top too. Two cup holders with a pass through, you'll fit 24 ounce bottles with no problem. Map box can both of the front seats. Captain's chairs, as we mentioned, the armrest is nice and thick, perfect for a large full-size arm. An additional storage right down below in the center console with the heated seats in between the adjustments for the automatic climate control. You can hopefully pick up how much light is brought into the cabin thanks to this massive panoramic moonroof. The interior lights are LED. We get a hook for a suit or a dress and air vents blow directly into our face from the top of the roof. Beautiful. We can hop out into the third row, see how much space is offered back there for somebody that's a little bit over six feet tall, slide the seat forward, take a step inside. I like how they give us a little plastic so we don't have to really mess up the carpet. Oh my gosh, a little bit tough of a process, but nothing to complain about. I still have plenty of third row seat space. For my knees, about three inches. My head, about an inch or two. We have an additional air vent blown directly into your face. If you're under six foot three, six foot four, you should be able to spend time in the third row of the expedition with no problem. Now, if you wanna have this third row up and have a usable cargo space because that's a pretty laughable amount of cargo space. Go with the extended wheelbase Expedition Max. It's an additional, I believe, three or four thousand bucks, but it will give you a really usable cargo space even behind a third row when it's up. These third rows are power folding. We have two cup holders and some storage, USB A port too. Pretty large window, additional speaker, and a cargo hook for a suit or a dress, even in the third row. Load roof feature is very spacious and you can probably fit three people back here. Maybe not three full-size adults, but you'll fit three, two full-size adults and somebody that's under five feet tall in the center with no problem. That's about it though. We can hop out of here, push the seat forward, check out the cargo space real quick, and then take this 2023 Expedition Limited out for a drive. So as you mentioned, we have two tiers of cargo. We already opened up the top tier. We'll open up the bottom tier now. Press the button. It's a power opening tailgate it's not a hands-free tailgate it should have been a hands-free tailgate but they ended up removing it and giving the customer a credit for it not a big deal by me because for some reason the hands-free tailgates never really work for me anyway the step in for this behemoth of a truck is about seven eight inches below my knee so for older or smaller pets probably not the easiest process to get back here but also for a full-size suv what do you expect it's actually a relatively lower floor for a full-size SUV, but if you get the pets back here, that second opening glass is so ridiculously convenient. Anyway, taking a step forward, we can fold these second row seats down by a click of a button. Oh, that was a second row, but that's what it looks like with a second row down, with a third row down, it takes a little bit longer. Cool. And you'll see the process. So with all the seats down, you can probably fit like a hundred inch TV back here. I don't think they make TVs that wouldn't fit in the back of this truck or SUV, whatever you like to call it, massive. And if you want an extra foot of space behind the third rows, go with the max. And this will be like a literally a long bed F-150 sized cargo space. Secret storage, see if you can open it right here. You can, we have a little bit of secret stuff underneath. See if you have anything underneath here. I think we do, but it's just a jack and yeah, fix the flat kit. Now I gotta figure out a way to put all this stuff back. 
Okay, not too difficult, but what you see is basically what we get. We can shut this trunk right up by a click of a button. It gives you a second, so if you got grocery bags in your hands, you don't necessarily have to worry about getting duped in the head, but this is a really nice SUV. I know we're pushing 75,000 bucks, but we're definitely getting our money's worth. You have all the features, luxury features you could possibly want or need, 22 inch rims, 400 horsepower, almost 500 pound feet of torque, a zero to 60 time around five seconds. And speaking of zero to 60, let's take this beast out for a drive and see what it's got. All right guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the 2023 Ford Expedition Limited. Let's take it out for a drive. And first thing I noticed, the steering is very light. We're still in normal mode. We'll try it out in sports, see if it gets a little heavier. But it is really light. Definitely lighter than the F-150 we just reviewed in this channel. Throttle feels responsive. Motor feels powerful. Brakes feel good. Brakes feel better than they do on the F-150. Take a step out here. As soon as you get the chance. Let's see if we get the chance. Lean into it a little bit. Oh. This is a fast, fast vehicle for its size. And really quiet at higher speeds too. We'll throw it in a little quicker than we should. The steering feels a little bit floaty. Not very confidence inspiring, but yeah, it's still pretty direct. I mean, you don't buy this vehicle to hit high speed twisties. And the torque remains very strong. We'll see how it rides over the speed bump. Yeah, the brakes feel good. No complaints. Speed bump, very soft. Ride quality feels better than the F-150. I mean, to be expected, we have an independent rear suspension here. F-150 has a solid rear axle. Turning radius here is excellent. I was really not expecting a turning radius this sharp with the new Expedition. Holy crap. This is about as sharp as the big Bronco. Wow. Take a step out here, throw it into sport mode. Try an acceleration off the line, hopefully, and see what we got. Clear, clear. Step out here. Come to a stop. Off the line. Boost. Oh, <laughs> this thing is quick. And looks like our fun is over, but this thing had picked up speed really quickly. And in sport mode, even at slow speeds, we're holding our gear, very eager to downshift, like barely any gas pedal, we're shooting almost 4,000 RPM. So for daily driving, I recommend throwing it into normal mode and leaving it in normal mode. But sport is still really cool to try out some accelerations, maybe show off to your friends. Take a step out here, we'll throw it back into normal mode. No reason to beat this thing up too far. Okay, normal mode. Yeah, the throttle immediately gets more numb the steering is lighter, not much lighter. Even in sport, the steering in this SUV is very light, but in normal, after being in sport for some time, it's almost like a video game controller. Like I don't feel anything really through the wheel. So light. All right, guys, taking a step out here. Test it out on this multiple lane highway. On the gas. Takes a second, but oh yeah. Oh, nice. It looks like a red light should be a good opportunity to try an acceleration out off the line and I'll catch back with you in one second. All right guys, off the line, boost. Ooh. Goodbye. This thing can move. I'm impressed. Handling wise, this is better than I expected. Performance wise, this is better than I expected. And luxury wise, this is a lot better than I expected. Of course, this 15 and a half inch screen helps. But wow, what an SUV. If you're looking for a full-size SUV, and the reason you're discouraged from full-size SUVs is A, fuel economy, B, crappy performance, and C, crappy handling, none of those need to be concerns for you anymore. This vehicle does all three of those well. There are, most mid-size SUVs don't handle this well. Most mid-size SUVs aren't this fast. No mid-size SUV is this spacious. The base price is approaching 70,000 bucks. After all these options, we're starting to approach 75, but you are getting your money's worth. There are Hyundai Palisades that I've seen sold for over 60. I've seen Kia Telluride sold for $65,000. And compared to vehicles like that, this is double the car. Not only is it double the car size-wise, of course, it's not really double the car size-wise, but you will get an additional two, three inches of legroom in the second row, at least three, four inches of legroom in the third row. It's a bigger, more bolding and present vehicle. You have more ground clearance. You can tow 
almost double the weight. Guys, I'm telling you, if you're gonna, if you're considering buying a high trim Palisade, high trim Telluride, high trim Acura MDX, I really can't imagine or justify paying $65,000, $70,000 for a midsize SUV when you can get an Expedition Limited, limited, not an XLT, loaded limited for under 75,000 bucks. One more time on the guess. Boost. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. The new Acura MDX Type S with a twin turbo V6 is gonna get smacked by this Expedition. This thing is noticeably faster. I'm really impressed. If you're looking for an SUV with good performance, good handling, and you want to sit seven people comfortably, please, I would definitely recommend checking out the 2023 Expedition and check out the Limited. Best bang for the buck, no questions asked. That high trim for the Limited where you get power running boards, all those goodies, is 1,700 bucks, also a good value. I recommend getting that package. The high performance package, I wouldn't call it a must have, but it would be a cool feature to have basically the same specs out of the Raptor. But overall, if you're looking for a full size SUV that can fit seven people comfortably, good performance, good handling, I would definitely recommend checking out the 2023 Expedition. And a big thanks to Zach at Ford of Port Ritchie for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below. And if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck, in the Port Ritchie, Clearwater, Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Zach. And huge thanks to all of you for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you, and I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel. Let me know what the trim levels are, and I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope all of you have a great day.